to live for the Lord while you're still young. I was telling somebody, we were plucked early. You know, this neighborhood immediately. What what? So the minute you know that it would eat, why top That's the analogy that I used yesterday talking to somebody, Giri. I am glad the Lord plucked me early. Because we were chosen by him. I did not choose myself. And the joy that I found, it is irreplaceable. It is it it cannot be compared to anything. And to some people, it seems like you are giving a lot. It seems like you are behind. It seems like you are not moving with times. It, it seems as if, it seems as if something is wrong with you, because you are not moving the way that the crowd is moving. But the God that I have found, the revelation of God that I have received, I cannot live below the revelation. There are certain things that I don't do that you might feel okay doing, but that is the God that has been revealed to you. The one that has been revealed to me requires more. And I say to people that you will only sacrifice to the degree of the revelation of God that you have. If the God that has been revealed to you is not worth you starving just for a day, that is the God that has been revealed to you. The God that has been revealed to you. I don't do certain things, I don't go to certain places, not because I think I'm better than you, but the thing that I have found has shown me that I do not belong there. Yet I am not tending to my own needs. Yet there's a thing that has been placed in me. Every single thing that I do, every decision that I make, is based on the thing that has been given to me to care. I am not tending to Tabiso's needs, but Tabiso has been implanted with something that generations are depending on. So Tabiso must take care of the thing that has been given. No matter how much in comes to the things of God that you might want to do something, when you remember the keys and the destinies that are attached to yours, you must wake up. Because in matters of the spirit, how you feel, it matters, but it is not relevant. That is not the same one. Let's sit down and let's start. We bless the Lord. We really, we bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. Uh, Chidi, come, come help me there by, by keys. Um, I first want to honor, you know, the father of the house, Muruti, there at the back. Thank you very much um, for allowing me, for trusting me. And I think the confidence that Muruti has in me has made me confident in the thing that God has placed in my life. And I, I am so honored to be in this house that I say that there is a, a, an abundance of gifts here. And God has trusted Muruti with those gifts. And it is not without cause. It is not without cause. So it, you would be wise to understand the mantle you are sitting under and the anointing you, you sit under. You would be wise to find out because you do not end up in places like this just because it's a Tuesday. I don't like summer because nchishi murachi. Nchishi elwana lin natle. I was asked by Oscar Toko to speak about healing in in terms of the kingdom and what the kingdom brings in terms of the matter of healing. And today's I'll try to be I'll do my best to be as just on the mark and as quick as possible, do my best. I didn't say I was going to, I said my best. Sometimes your best is not good enough, you see. And then I, I don't, so I'll do my best. The, the title is uh, Kingdoms are for the living and healing for the willing. Kingdoms are for the living and healing for the, for the willing. Let us close our eyes and I will pray. Heavenly Father, I just honor you for being in this place. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We can do nothing without you. We can do nothing lest you lead us. Lead us to a rock that is higher than us, Lord, from the well from which you want us to drink. May we remain in the kingdom even as we learn. May we remain in you, O Christ. For you say, remain in me and I shall remain in you. May we not move from our position. May we press on towards the mark of the high calling. That even as we learn from your precious Holy Spirit, the comforter, the teacher, may we take this knowledge and go forward with it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We bless the Lord. Um, I'm just going to go straight into it. 
Shidi, if you can give me strings, that would be that would be great. Matthew 6, verse 33. I don't know, is it it's working? Matthew 6, if we can just get straight into it. Matthew 6, verse 33. Matthew 6, verse 33. That says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added. I want to start by a proposal and, and, and bring this across, and then we're going to delve into it. To say that kingdoms, their riches and the prosperity belong to those that are living. That it is the living that take part in the benefits of being in the kingdom. They say, seek so that you may enter and have part. Muruti said yesterday. You seek, you find, you enter, and then you take part. Right. So, we're going to delve into that. Into kingdoms and their riches and prosperity belong to the living. And I'm saying that the dead have no portion in the things of the living. John chapter 3 verse 3. No one can see the kingdom lest they are born again. No one can see the kingdom lest they are born again. Because the dead have no business in matters of the living, as I have just said. The dead have no business. So when he is proposing that you must be born again in order to see the kingdom, it means that you must be alive. I'm, I'm getting somewhere. Matthew 16, verse 21 to 23. Matthew 16, verse 21 to 23. Let's go there. Matthew 16, verse 21 to 23. I believe I'm going to make my point very quickly. 16, 21. Yes. From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Next verse. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord. This shall not happen to you. Next verse. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of man. You are not mindful of the things of God, but of the things of man. Jesus understood the necessity of his death. I'm going to take a commercial break. I'm going to stop there. It's a commercial break. It's not part of... Jesus understood the necessity of his death. The Son of Man understood the necessity of his own death. But the requirements of our own death seem to pass us by all the time. The need and the requirement for you to die for purposes to be fulfilled seem to pass us by. Because we live in a world that tells you, you want it, you desire it, get it, take it, it's yours. Just because you desire it doesn't mean it's the correct thing to have. The requirements. Sometimes, as Peter was trying to do, some people will come to talk you out of the things that you already know. You know where you're supposed to go. You know what is required. But you are being convinced out of the truth that you already know. But when it comes to certain things, we're still at a commercial break. no. Rabu, I'm Zanti for sure, Rabu. But there are certain things. Hoka Yakoba Lebabang. Marapu what? You know? They give you prescriptions. Hori, Latangu e Pepul, got having a blue. Host the week, Rawi, Tabakamu Jarateng will start for seven days. You won't even flinch. You won't even flinch. But we have an understanding of God in that we think that the only thing that is necessary, the, the culture, popular culture, has taught us because Christianity has been also, you know, contemporarized and all these things. We have a thing of thinking that all you need to do with God is acknowledge that he is God. 
you, that is the, it stops there. That is the requirement. That, no, I believe in God. I say to girls all the time who, who, who ask advice about what kind of guy to look for. If you go on a date and you ask him about God and he says, yes, I believe in God, but Emela? But, you know, but Ella. By the time of the sentence, come in here, my sister. We seem to think the only requirement is that you must just believe in God. That is the only requirement you, you think. The Bible says, demons believe that there is a God and they tremble. I get to in. He, Christ, had to die, it will. He, Christ, had to die to have a certain level of authority on earth and in heaven. The one in heaven he already had before he left. He was the son of God. He was there. But for the authority on earth to be established, he had to die. But he could not remain dead because the authority cannot be exchanged. He had to rise. And he had to be here to do it. He could not do it up in heaven. Jesus had to physically be here and die and live in order to gain authority to the things that he needed to get authority here on earth. Because it was only after his death that it became the name that is above all other names. Yeah, were well, you it's celebration? <laughs> it was there. Jesus could not remain dead. So it was very important that when they go to the tomb, they found it empty. They needed to be a witness. They need to find that tomb empty. Because the empty tomb meant that authority has been changed. That the enemy has no power anymore. He has risen. Now, he was dead, but now he's alive. He has portion in matters of the living. Because the dead have no business in matters of the living. So that principle had to be established physically here on earth. Genesis chapter 2 verse, verse 7 says, Men were formed from the ground of the earth. And I, may, I go back to this so that we understand the principle that you are an earth. You are a cosmos with systems and values and structures of functioning. You, this, you have an atmosphere, you, the same way that an earth would, with an atmosphere, with systems, with, the same way that a kingdom functions. This, value systems, systems of functioning, an atmosphere, a, are yielded under a certain principality or a God, kingdom, this thing. Systems and values. You are a walking kingdom. In, 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 in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, God said, do not eat from this tree to Adam, because if you do it, you will surely die. They ate from the tree and they died. It was not a physical situation. But they died, the spirit man, because you are the spirit. You are not the container in which the spirit is held. You are the spirit. This is a container of the spirit. More often than not, we are just to what the container wants and forget what the spirit wants. You are neglecting yourself. But no, they say, what is they call Me time or self-care. It's fine. Care, self, self care But there's a self that we neglect. The only one that, the only self that matters. You neglect that person. The one who must govern the kingdom, you have neglected. You have starved the government of your kingdom. They cannot rule properly. So, Adam, we inherit death from Adam. So, when we say that kingdoms are for the living, until you are born again, you are still dead. You, you have that inheritance of Adam. That's why you cannot see the kingdom. Because kingdoms are for the living. 
It has been hidden away from you. That's why the Bible says, to them that perish, it is foolishness. Why? Because kingdoms are for the living. The dead have no business in matters of kingdoms. The spirit must govern. John chapter 10 verse The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but I've come that they may have life and have it abundant. They may have life. You enter the kingdom, you receive Christ, you have life. Now you can partake in the kingdom. You can partake. It does, because the same way that you entered, you can enter the kingdom of God. People leave. They leave. You can be a Christian seven years. But because you did not know the rules of the kingdom you are functioning in, because you did not see it fit to know the values, the principles that function in that kingdom that you have now entered, or And then you go convince other people. So when you're looking at Tavis, or Tavis, like a style, it is Christ who causes us to live and be partakers of the kingdom because kingdoms are for the living. You come to Christ and you gain the access and the authority. Right? So when you were dead before you became born again. What happened is that the flesh, the kingdom, was ruling itself. The kingdom told you, So now, there's a new, there's a new governing board. The one that was dead is now alive. It must set the principles in motion. And sometimes the flesh overcomes us because we think it will not fight us. It's the same principle that I tell people about setting boundaries. People who are not good at communicating are bad at setting boundaries. Because you cannot wake up in 2023 and decide, new year, new me. These are the boundaries. But you have not told the people around you. You start cutting people off. No, so you have not given us the, the sufficient information to say, okay, these are the new rules. Are we engaging or are we not? Even with matters of the flesh like this, you communicate the boundaries. And that is the word of God. You speak it constantly so that the flesh may align. It's used to, it's used to running a mark doing whatever it wants at the point that it wants. But now you must align. The one that was dead is now alive. The king has risen. Now you must align. The government is now back in in session. You must align. But like I say, anything that is alive will not allow you just to take control just like that. If you grew up in a... When I was still... I did not like it. I was very, I never liked going to visit at my grand's because, you know? So, we are there. That is my understanding of it when I was a kid. Now I'm fine. When I was a child, I didn't like visiting. But when it's time for the chicken to be killed, Sometimes they even make it an exercise. They tell the kids to go chase the chicken until they corner it. It will fight you. I get it knows what's coming. So we expect the flesh to just lie down. Our God, this desire is still in me. That's why you hear people say terms like you are a sexual being. When? Can you can? And if I 
Tubari. Mm, true. 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 Chicken at all, it's true. God did not promise Hori the things of the flesh. He will keep the flesh quiet. He told you, Paul told you, he says, what the flesh wants is contrary to what the, 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 the spirit wants. What the spirit wants is contrary. It's up to you to decide what to do with that information. The revelation has been given to you. It is up to you as a wise person to seek out the depths of the revelation, to know that you must apply it. Just because the flesh still longs for it, it does not mean that it is the correct way to go. The flesh wants many things. It is not a radar of right and wrong. Or the, the correct place or the incorrect place. God did not promise. He didn't say, I can't see, I can't. He didn't say that. But he said in Galatians 5, verse 22, verse, verse 22 to 23. I want us to read that, 22 to 23. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Let's go to this, the other verse. Gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. The fruit of the Spirit. What he says to you is that what your spirit must produce is this. He said nothing about your flesh producing. He told you your flesh will always seek death and corruption. He says, if you sow in the flesh, you will reap corruption. But he says, your spirit must take these things out. So that means your spirit must be fed enough in order to display the goodness, the gentleness, and the self-control. So the promise of God was not that, I have given you the ability to see and discern. Did not promise a lack of desire of the flesh. He says, subdue it. All things shall be added that Matthew 6, chapter 33 means. Even healing is included. But healing is for the willing. So we're speaking about kingdoms. They belong to who? They belong to the living. Now we are in the kingdom. One of the things that are added is healing. It is the portion. As a citizen of heaven, it is your portion. Healing is your portion. You don't need to search far. You don't need to wait for Tabiso to come and say, so so for Tabiso. It is your portion. Take possession of the things that belong to you. Or you will seek until there is no... What COVID has showed us is that we always complain about time. COVID, worry, okay. 21 days, I'm not going. 21 days, I want to hurry. Now we're getting into it. Our back. Show you there's plenty of time. Healing is for the willing. John 5, verse, uh, verse 5 to 7. Let's read it. My point is being made now. He says, now a certain man was there who had an infirmity for 38 years. Remember that. For 38 years. Next verse. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made whole? Because I mean... I mean, say, 38 years. Listen to the reply. He says, do you want to be made whole? He says, the sick man answered him, said, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred up, but while I am coming, another steps before me. And then Jesus says, take up your mat, stand up and go. It sounds like Jesus found his answer. He found his answer. 
Because they didn't interrogate him more. Because if you remember the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, I don't know, you have this. You have, he, he continues until a point where he stops, where it, 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 there's a finality to the conversation. More, it sounds like he found his answer. The man had been there for 38 years in infirmity. Let's say he didn't, he was not there for all 38. Let's say he was there for 20 of those. Every single day, waiting for his turn. The Jesus that was talking to him, what he had was the willingness in what he said. 38 years. He said, every time I try to, somebody goes in before me. He identified the willingness. Every single day, his life was spent next to that place, looking for his healing. So Jesus found the answer in that man's reply. Being there, let's just say 38 years, and waiting every single time somebody goes before him, Jesus found his answer because healing is for the willing. You must be willing. He said he did not have a social life. All he was waiting for was that if I can just jump in when this river is dead. Healing is for the willing. You've been given access to the principles of the kingdom. Access. To access this healing. And understand and search God about the healing that is required in your life. Principles of the kingdom. John 14 verse 16 says you've been given an, an, an advocate, a comforter, a teacher in the person of the Holy Spirit who guides you in all things. We neglect him. We neglect the Holy Spirit. If there's anybody who is forgotten, it is the Holy Spirit. And the thing about it, he does not mind. He does the work that he's supposed to do and then he leaves. He does the work he's supposed to do and then he leaves. He does, he's not waiting for your applause. He, got, he does the work that he's been sent to do and then he shifts. He does the work that he's supposed to do. He's the most forgotten. But Jesus said, I, I don't leave you alone. But the person whom he has left us with, we forget that person. Your teacher, your comforter, your guide. You forget about him. Because it is the Holy Spirit that matures you into healing. Healing is matured by the Holy Spirit. There are new age things, but he energy, but he vibes, but he manifests. But I manifest good energy, I manifest all these things. The reason why you are still manifesting energy, but there is no joy, you have to convince yourself that you have it. It's because the one who must mature the healing, you can have knowledge about what part needs to heal. But lest he finishes the work, you will remain the same. The only thing that you will have is the burden of the knowledge you've acquired. You will know about that father wound. You will know it properly. Well, these are the symptoms. But lest you give it to the one who can mature you fully into healing, you will remain the same. With energies and vibes and manifestations. You will remain the same. The one place that completes that situation is the dwelling. Once I found the dwelling, I think if I speak from a personal experience, once I found it, it did not make sense to me to find any other person. I'm not very articulate as to defending my faith. But, Tell 
taste and see that the Lord is good. That there are other gods that will come to you and have requirements of bring this, bring that. Oh, are you going to be able to do that? Are you going to But before Utla, the scripture says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. When you meet him in that place of dwelling, a joy like no other. Even in the darkest days, I cannot explain it. Your flesh is weak, but you feel like you have a strong baby jumping in your stomach. You are a man. That's the closest I can describe it. There's something inside here that is, it's like it's fighting something you, know, you don't know about. It's standing up. But everything in your body is telling you, Hur, I do not have strength to go to the next step. But there's something inside that is saying, I'm not stopping. The man that you have fed, I say to people all the time, Kari, you do not need to defend yourself. If you know that you have fed the man inside you well, he will defend you. The one that you have fed will stand up and defend you. In the moment when it counts, just watch. Just wait and watch. That 1 Corinthians 13, when it says, love is kind, love is patient. These are the requirements, how healing is sustained. It is in the premises of love, environment. An environment must be a particular kind of environment that, that, that brings about a certain kind of outcome. Corn is planted in a certain environment. Tomatoes, all these plants, apples, there must be an environment. There must be, it's a matter of soil. It's a, the environment decides what quality a thing comes out as. So if the environment that you're always finding yourself in is not good, the fruits that you are displaying should have told you that long ago. No prophet had to come to say, don't do that, don't go there. Don't do it. The fruits that you display should have told you, Hurmara, these fruits are not the quality that they must be. Let me check the soil. Let me check the environment. Now, lastly, before we do the questions, because there's, there's a question thing, my intention is to be done by half past three or sooner. Um, when in Isaiah, it speaks about Exchanging. If you read that scripture in Isaiah, beauty for ashes. That swap that happens. That's the principles of heaven. Is that what God takes, he exchanges something beautiful. He takes your pain and he gives you something. How will empty? Because that pain was taking up space for something else. So he removes the pain, but he sees that there's a gap. So he must fill it with something. So, let us be aware of the work that the kingdom requires, firstly, but what the kingdom offers us. Muruti said it beautifully. Rabatla. Rabatla di lote setse bari filing tzo, naradibatla. Se lo abatla na di kia tzant. Udi feeda. Udi feeda. Every time you get a girl, you get a little noha. You get a little gun. That's what we're doing. But the, it is here. It has been allotted to us. You don't need to deserve it. Find out the principle and acquire the thing that has been promised to you. It doesn't take much. Sometimes we fast. We fast. We fast. We fast. God has said to you, just do one, two, three. It's yours. Or, uh-uh. You know, it's all right. Or, drama kya ingi. Good drama, eo. Good drama. 
Yes, you live a fasting lifestyle for a certain purpose, a life of consecration, to keep the flesh in submission, to keep it under control. Because that's why Paul says, let he who thinks he is standing take heed lest he falls. Because Before we continue, I sandwich Tori. Let the questions be in the middle and not at the end. Um, because the second part, I, I, I'm giving the principle that the Holy Spirit told me and it blew my mind. It's something that I knew, but now I knew, I knew, knew it now. <laughs> so let's take, there are, there are Kamahano, you have the questions there that were asked. Just do three of them. Just do three for time. There are questions that are asked. We sent a Google form that people need to fit if they had questions about healing, right? So, Kamahano, just choose random three. Random three. But while he's still fixing, let me just continue to that, just so that it is not... Uh, is young? Or are you still looking? Thank you, there still. So, this is the thing that... Um, I'll come back. I'll, I'll come back then. This is the thing that the Holy Spirit taught me and it blew my mind though I knew somehow. He said to me that every single thing is a relationship issue. Every single problem is a relationship problem. I'm a student. I don't have money, financial lack. The providence that's supposed to be given by a father is not there. It creates a wound. I get assaulted in the street. I have a father at home, yes. He cannot be at the place of the assault when it happens. He could not have known. But the wounded place is the father place. It's not a random place. So the place that must be healed is the father place. Everything in your life is a relationship issue. Why is it a relationship issue? Because God set it as a prototype to the divine. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Your father, your mother, and your siblings. The Holy Spirit as taking up the image of the mother figure. The father, the father figure being, you know, being God as the father. And Jesus being the sibling. So in your every single day life, the problem that occurs, it becomes a relationship problem. Because why is it a relationship problem? Because you expect God to be in every situation. Are you with me? I hope I didn't throw you off. You expect God to be in every single situation. So when the situation happens, it goes directly to where the requirement was for that situation not to happen. It is not rational, but like I said, in matters of the spirit, how you feel? It matters, but it is not relevant. Every issue is a relationship issue. Kamahano, read just three questions. Choose a random three. Okay. Um, first question. Is no more pain the mark to determine healing, both physically and spiritually? Virala. <laughs> is, is no more pain the mark to determine healing? Oh, is there, uh, there's no pain. pain yes. So it marks that I have healed. Yes, awesome. yes. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, another one. Um, no, um, no more pain is not the mark. Perspective is. Perspective is the mark. That tells you of the degree of healing that has already occurred. It is not whether there is pain or not. Pain by itself will be dealt with. Right? Because sometimes if you look at pain, sometimes you know what happens. Certain situations are so traumatic in terms of what somebody did, in terms of maybe they said whatever, and every time you're around this person, you are anxious and whatever. Sometimes you could have forgiven this person, even in your mind. Right? But then the pain remains in what? The memory of the flesh. Not that you have not healed. It's that the flesh has not caught up with what has been done. Are you with me? So sometimes the, the flesh still has the memory of the feeling associated with 
the thing or the person. But it does not mean that healing has not... The way to check the progress of healing is the perspective. How you think about a person will tell you how far the healing is. Because the scripture says, what a man thinketh, so is he. Your spirit, you are he, the spirit. What a man thinketh, so is he, the spirit. Are you with me? So it is perspective, it is not pain. Because sometimes you'll be thrown off by the memory of the flesh, that the flesh is not caught up with what has been done in your spirit. And then you start acting out, and then you undo the work that has been done. Then you remove your own progress. So it's perspective, not pain. Okay, um, another question. How do you focus on healing when there are people who, who are venting to you? Is your healing put on hold as you help God's people? Oh, okay. Um, your healing is never placed on hold. Healing is a present continuous. Healing, it, it, it's, it's continuous. You are healing. Um, when people are are, are venting, people will vent, right? You must be in a position to be strong enough to understand or to not be influenced by that which is happening, right? I say to people when say that person has bad energy, so I don't like being around them. Kero, but what is it about your energy that is low that you are influenced, but you are not influencing them? Why can't there be a swap? So what is it in you that has not risen enough that, right? We say that about people. Environments, we can leave environments like that. We can leave environments, we can leave them. But when it comes to a person, Oti, this person is there. It's only their energy is, is and you, you are cutting them off because of that. But put in enough work in the spirit that the spirit can stand even in that, in that, right? So even in the flesh, turn to OJ so that you can, you, you lift weights. Then you are lifting 10K, 10K, 20K, 50K. You build it, then 10K is nothing anymore. You get what I'm saying? Your, your spirit is strong enough to take a punch. Not really a punch, but you, you get my analogy. Let's uh, do the last one so that I can. Yeah. When do you realize that you need to heal from something? When do you realize when you need for, to heal from something? Sometimes Holy Spirit tells us in sections. You can forgive one person several times for different sections. Because sometimes he unlocks according to your capacity in that season. But in your mind, you think, I keep on forgiving this person, but you're not forgiving them for the same thing. Mm. You are unlocking as you go along. That's why he's a teacher, and he guides you mm. into things. He guides you mm. into it, right? You cannot do it by yourself, because you don't know which part is head. Mm. It's like, go dog thing. dog. Mole, mole, mole. And I'm with you. Did you banana zeri? You malo, but kishok it's on. He has not examined me. Since I'm Mzabu Tad, he hasn't asked me anything. But I'm making assumptions about where the problem is. I cannot do it. I cannot bring myself to the doctor's office and then examine myself. I go to the doctor to be examined by the doctor. The doctor will tell me what is the requirements. So the pace even of healing goes according to what the doctor has said. You take these pills for this and this and this, and then in this one, you, you take two now. You no longer take the, the, the amount that you used to take until the process is perfected. So trust the Holy Spirit to do it. But like I say, we neglect him. You can read as many books as you want. They are very smart books with very smart psychologists that, yes, speak and touch on it. And they fit it. They fit it on the mark. But that knowledge alone will give you nothing because it cannot come into maturity without Holy Spirit. Because knowledge alone is a burden. So if we are aware of that, we would help ourselves. That scripture, when I was speaking about, those are the, the other ones, yeah, yeah. We will find a, a position for them in some way. In First John four verse twenty, he says, "Whoever claims to love God but hates his brother or sister is a liar." How can you claim to love God whom you do not see, but your brother whom you see you do not love? He's saying that the principle starts here before it is extended. What I said about relationships. 
being connected. So your relation with your fellow man tells you to how, to the degree of depth you will go in God. Because sometimes we see powerful men of God and we think they've done the healing work. Some men of God have not done the healing work. What's functioning is the anointing. There are two types of anointing. There's anointing in you and anointing on you. They're not the same. The anointing in you is the one that you work on, the, 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 pet, the, the spiritual person that you feed with the word of God that is strengthened. The one on you is for ministering. That's why a minister could preach in the morning and in the evening they are at a prostitution thing. I don't have the time to unpack that, that revelation. But sometimes we see people and assume that there is healing because there is power. God sometimes shows up for the sake of his people, not because of the men standing in front. It's not, sometimes it's not because of the men. Sometimes it's because God says, there's a pulling from my people. As the man stands here, God rests the anointing so that the work may be done. Kingdoms are for the living and healing for the willing because the dead have no business in matters of the living. I want us to, to pray. I'm going to want us to pray. We're going to do it differently. I know we are expecting that maybe I'm doing a sozo. Kamahano asked me, are you doing a sozo? So if I do it, you're as surprised as me. I know, I don't know what I'm doing in that part. But one thing that I feel, it's, it's five past three now. Two, three, sorry. Five to three, and by half past three, we'll definitely be done. But I just want us to pray. Um, you know, I was laughing by myself uh, last night. Every time he comes. He prays for the people that God told me to pray for. So in a sense of, I, I too. Oh. <laughs> the young and new, they in 2019. Was it 2019? 2019, right? I was told, the people that you prayed for, he also prayed for. He did it again this time. So never like little kids, you know. Baba <laughs> But I want us to pray. I really want us to pray because there is there is something in this season and there is something in today that we have gathered like this. And really, my desire is that the flesh may keep quiet. My first desire is that the flesh may keep quiet. And that the things that are required of you today, that you may do it. Our salvation, we have not been called to be cute. It is not cute. What I want us to realize is the calling of God upon our lives. And sometimes we might designate it to preachers only. They're being set apart. Because desire alone is not enough to get you through. To just desire him is not enough. There is more that is required. So we have not sang today, but in order for the things that need to happen here to happen, the atmosphere must be saturated with worship in order for the things that need to happen. That is the prescription that the Holy Spirit has given that in order for the things that need to happen in this place, that the atmosphere must be saturated with worship. And I'm glad that I, I brought Chidi along to, to help. Let us, let us stand as we just ask Holy Spirit to begin leading us.